Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and uh, welcome to another episode of the Kenneth Well Stationary Engine Build. Okay, so um, the next thing that we want to do is the pivot plate and pivot pin and the adjusting nut. This, uh, uh, the materials that we're going to need for this is uh, some eighth inch or three millimeter diameter rod. Uh, I happen to have about a four foot piece of eighth inch uh, cold rolled steel that I ordered for this project a long time ago and so I've already cut off a uh, 30 millimeter section of rod for that. Uh, this is only going to get some threads two and a half millimeters on one end 10 millimeters on the other. That's nothing exciting. I'll do that off camera so we won't worry about that. I'll, I'll bring that back in when I'm done with that. Uh, the next piece, uh, the pivot plate, is uh, either 20 by 6 millimeter or 3 quarter by quarter inch brass flat and I have a piece of brass flat here for that and it takes a piece 32 millimeters long I've already cut that out and uh, so it's ready to go uh, the only other thing that we'll need is we'll need some uh, 3 8 uh, diameter brass rod to make the knurled adjusting nut and we'll put that in the lathe when it comes time we'll knurl it down um, drill it, thread it, and uh, part it off and make the nut out of that alright so I, I think the thing, uh, well let's describe what this is so this block um, that we see here has a relief in it. It has a hole, a clearance hole for this pin to pass through, okay? And the small thread on one side of this pin will thread to the back of the cylinder, just like this here. It will pass through this block. And then it pulls, this pin with the spring and adjusting nut, will pull the cylinder against this block uh, tightly and uh, that will be the pivot face. So now to reduce the friction there's a little bit of an undercut here in the middle uh, so it'll leave the raised edge. That undercut looks to be about a half a millimeter. Uh, we'll figure out what that is in inches and that we're probably just going to file that since I don't have milling capabilities yet. Um, but then that reduces the area that this has to pivot, or the friction area that this has to pivot on that. And then uh, of course this block, uh, we use these two mounting screws here then would mount it to the frame here and I still have to fettle some of that out but that will mount to the frame allowing the piston to, uh, I mean the uh, cylinder to come here and then it will rotate here the rod will come through, be adjusted back here so I mean you get the idea so this is uh, what we got going on. Alright so um, like I said, I'm just going to thread uh, the, the adjusting pin off camera. We need a little spring. I do have some spring wire, but uh, you know, I think uh, maybe a, a spring from a ballpoint pen would work, and I got a few of them laying around, so we'll try that. If not, we'll actually wind one if we have to. Uh, so I'll do the pen off, or <laughs> off camera. Um, so we'll, let's see, let's concentrate on the block. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center line across uh, the length and the width um, of the block and then I'll come in three millimeters on each side and, and make a mark and then we'll have the marks for these two threaded holes and it looks like these are threaded 5VA uh, so I will tap them uh, 540 and uh, the center hole looks to be uh, just an eighth inch clearance hole and then a counter bore uh, probably for the spring so we'll get to that when we get to that initially I'll just do the eighth inch. Alright so let me get this marked up and center punch and I'll bring you back in. Okay so I went ahead and tapped this little rod two and a half millimeters on one side uh, ten millimeters on the other. The short thread obviously will go into to the cylinder so to allow it to pivot All right, and that will go through this block. Okay. So all right, we're just going to set that aside. All right, so now these, this block, uh, you can see that I've marked and I've punched the locations. All right, so I need to drill some holes here. So these uh, two outside holes will be tapped. Um, uh, well, here they say 5BA, but I'm tapping 540. So I will pilot drill those. I think it's a number 38. I'll have to look. Um, but I want to go ahead and, and drill and tap these two outer holes and then I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole uh, through the center but I will not do the counter bore at this time. So let me get those drilled and uh, I'll be right back. Okay so the block has been uh, drilled. Eighth inch uh, 
in the center and this is tap size which is 38 for for uh, 540 so here you get you understand what happens this can pivot on this block now okay so now uh, the, we do need um, a couple holes at the top we won't do those until uh, we have the um, piston done to where we can uh, accurately gauge those that's why I drilled the hole all the way through this so I can find uh, poke through there and mark this block where these two holes will actually be now this block uh, has to be mounted to the top of the cylinder I mean to the uh, engine frame now I fettled this out now for those um, I got a question I've got a couple of these old chisels like this and I sharpen this up and boy that this was great right this little chisel was great for getting in the corners, right, and getting the uh, uh, the bits of uh, aluminum out of there, you know, to where I can get, you know, this block in here where I want it to sit, right. Um, what is what is this chisel called? I know this, this chisel has a name, so could somebody in the comments tell me what this kind of chisel is, is called? So I'd appreciate it. All right, so the next thing I need to do is... Um, I will probably do just a little bit more adjusting here. Uh, I'll center this block up in the frame. I'm going to clamp it down with a little small C clamp. I'm going to transfer the eighth inch, and then um, and then transfer these three holes through um, the engine frame. So this will actually be screwed to, or you know, attached to the engine frame, and then the eighth inch clearance hole will go all the way through uh, for this for this rod. So. Let me, uh, let me do that and uh, I'll get this drilled and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have the three holes drilled into the engine frame. And uh, if we see here, the, you know, the, this rod will slide through this face. Of course, it pivots here and it goes through the frame, right? And then this block here gets bolted to the frame. And then there should be a clearance hole drilled back here for whatever the OD of the spring is that we're going to use. I haven't found the spring yet, so I don't know what size I'm going to drill that hole. These will be clearance holes for the um, for the 832. No, I'm sorry, the 540 screws that will or bolts that will hold this in. And I may have to use studs. Uh, I was advised uh, with that. Emma said that uh, it was better to use studs because once this is all assembled onto the uh, onto the main engine frame you can't uh, you know you can't get the you can't get nuts on there so here's the crank okay and uh, so you can see things are starting to come together uh, the next thing I need to do uh, on the plate is um, pull this out the next thing I need to do on the plate is that there's a, a subtle relief you see it here uh, it's about 20 thou deep and it leaves just a quarter inch raised boss. And I'm, I'm saying quarter inch. It, I don't see a measurement off the top of my head, but remember, uh, if, you, if you've been following the series, this steam inlet hole is about three millimeters down. So if that's in the middle, so we would say six, six millimeter pad for that to rotate on would be fine. And uh, just to be symmetric, you know, we'll, we'll put the pad on top and the bottom. We'll relieve the middle. And the whole point of that is to reduce the friction. So. Um, let me get this marked up and I'll get this over in the, uh, in the, uh, vise and I'm just going to file that down. 20 thou is just, it's just enough to, to relieve, uh, the fa this face touching this face. So let me, uh, let me get this marked up and in the vise and I'll bring you back in, uh, when I go to file it up. Okay guys, I have the, uh, uh, what do they call this anyway? They call it the, the, uh, pivot plate. I got the pivot plate marked leaving a quarter inch for a quarter inch pad at the top and the bottom of it and I'm just going to file a relief in the middle I got some assorted files here I think I'm going to take this little triangular file and see if I can maybe provide myself a line you know actually I think what I might do is just take the hacksaw to provide myself a line that I don't accidentally go over. So I think I'm going to do that. One like this. One over here on this side. All 
like that. So now I got a couple delineations to you know to try to help prevent me from sliding over into the into no no land. And I'm just going to take file and I'm just going to file the middle of this out. Now this might take a little while, but uh, I don't have a milling machine. A milling machine would just make short work of this. So I'm just going to file this down and when I get it down and I'll bring it back. I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I've just finished up filing this uh, little relief in here. And uh, so, you know, I'm just, it, the point is we just want this surface and this surface here for the head, I mean for the cylinder, uh, to pivot on. So this is relieved, and uh, for the depth, and, you know, I have this little scale here. This one measures about 20 thou thick, sits in there, and it, it just clears. So I know that it's 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 at least 20 thou uh, of an inch deep. So that's that's fine. All right. So really, the next thing to do is I need to I have the uh, clearance holes drilled for the 540 uh, screws or studs or whatever I want to put here, but now I need to um, tap, well, let me pull this out. I need to tap these two holes here, uh, 540. So what I want to do um, is I will just go ahead and, well, I'm going to pull the crank out, I guess. Let's get it out of the way. I'm just going to run the uh, cylinder through here to sort of hold it in place, the align, you know, align it up. And then uh, I'm going to come from the back side here and then I will tap the two, uh, the two holes 540 and I'll just do that off screen. And then um, I did find a, a spring that I think will work. Um, I measured the diameter on it and it's uh, 222 thou. So the clearance hole that I want to drill in the frame and the counterbore that I'll put in the pivot plate will be, I'm, I'm going to go with a quarter inch. So I want to take care of those, uh, those things and then uh, I'll come right back and then I think we'll be starting on the um, adjustment, adjusting nut. I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, and then I think we're pretty much done. So let me uh, get these few little things done and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so I have drilled the clearance hole here a uh, quarter inch for the spring that I got and uh, these are drilled through uh, clearance size and then my plate here you see it's, it's threaded and then I counterboard about halfway through uh, so that the spring would have a place to sit on. Now in addition to that um, Emma told me that uh, definitely want to make a pair of studs to go in to the block to hold this in because you can't get bolts in. There's so little the room is so tight from the firebox assembly that you can't get um, bolts in here. Uh, so she advised me to make studs. So I've made two little studs. It's like this. Now I will lock tight these in when it gets time. And of course the studs will fit through there. And then I'll make a couple nuts. Um, for the um, for these here, like I done for the firebox, that would be quarter inch across flat uh, brass nuts, about an eighth inch thick. So that'd be uh, about six millimeters across flats and um, about three millimeters thick, give or take. So now that fastens there. Okay, so that's all good. The piston then uh, or cylinder assembly, right? Um, we'll slide right through here, and then the spring through here and then I'll have to uh, oops. this is why uh, I want smaller nuts alright so that goes there like that and then of course our knurled nut will go here but just for now I want to use this nut until we go over and make the knurled nut and then see that holds that against there allows that to pivot on this plate. Now we still have to do an air inlet and an exhaust uh, but those will be after we get the piston made uh, because you won't know where to mark those. And of course the flywheel right there. So uh, we're getting close to having uh, this assembly done. Uh, next we're going to go to uh, the lathe and we're going to make the uh, knurled 
that show up. We're going to make the knurled nut that goes onto the back right here. Now, before I do that, I do want to be honest and upfront here with you. Um, the one that I showed you initially filed was this one. And you notice there's a big old quarter inch hole all the way through it. And uh, so what I learned was that, uh, and I knew this and I should have known better. As I was drilling this and trying to drill it about halfway through, the uh, sharp negative rake of the drill caught the brass, dug itself in, lifted the vise and all up and popped right through it. So that's how I ended up with that. So um, that was my fault. I, I should have had the um, I should have had the uh, vise probably clamped down. But more importantly, I should have used a different um, a different grind on the drill. So a friend of mine gave me a couple empty um, drill indexes. See, I have one labeled here brass and plastic, and then the, I have the other one labeled flat bottom drill. So um, for for the brass and plastic, really all I've done, and hopefully this will show up, you can see that I've knocked the edge off. You see it shining there? And I've knocked the edge off there to give that no rake or negative rate from the drill. That way it prevents it from digging in uh, and, and it works really, really good. And then for the flat, I just simply, hopefully you see here, I just ground it off flat straight across and then relieved, um, relieved the, the edges coming back. Okay. And then just hit it with the, hit it with the, a lap just to sort of sharpen it up and the whole point of that was so that um, you can get back over here to our little engine I probably should have showed this first let me take the uh, pivot plate back off okay so you'll see that it's counterboard and it's got a flat bore right so it gives a nice square face for the spring to to rest against, I guess that'll show. So anyway, all right. Well, the next thing to make, of course, is the um, is the adjusting nut. So let's uh, head over to the lathe and let's knock that out. Okay. So the last part to make on this uh, sheet here is the um, adjusting nut, and it's just a piece of uh, three eighths diameter brass. I'll knurl it. Uh, we'll cut a little detail on it. And it's just going to be drilled 38 and then tapped uh, 540. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I have my little clamp knurler here. And it's kind of dirty, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. And we'll get some oil. This generally takes a little bit of oil. All right, let's uh, see what we got. All right, let's see how that looks. Shouldn't take too much to... Yeah, it's a little cross knurled, but let's see if we can clean it up here a little bit. Now I will admit, I do not do much knurling. Oh, that's much better. Oh yeah, it's a nice crisp knurl. Okay, so let's, uh, I have a form tool then I'm just going to plunge in there and maybe create a bit of a curved shoulder on the front of this. Like I said, this is entirely artistic at this point. And this is just a round nose tool. Okay, I like that. Okay, now why I have it in the uh, Chuck, I'm just going to break this edge and um, go ahead and drill it. So let me uh, let me get you in position out of the way of uh, my tailstock, and let's do that. Okay, so I got uh, number three center drill, which is uh, in fact a little bit too large, but I'm just going to bump it. Uh, all my number twos are broke, so I need to order some. Anybody know a good place to order just number twos, twos and threes? Uh, leave me a comment. 
So I'm just gonna just touch that there, just like that, just to, there we go, to give a place for the 38. And then I'll drill deep enough to tap eight or 10, uh, well, 10 or 12 millimeters or so, and then we'll tap it. Okay, that ought to be deep enough. I think I ran into the camera. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so the next thing to do is get the uh, parting blade on and start to part here and knock off these edges. So let me uh, get that ready and I'll bring you back in. Okay, I have the parting blade on. And I'm just going to part it off where I think, yeah, it looks like a good, right there looks good to me. So I'm just going to start the part here. Okay, now I'm just going to break some edges. Okay, now we'll finish parting her off. All right, so there we have it. We've got a nice little knurled nut. I'll uh, knock off this little tit that's left on here and it'll be good. So I'll see you back over at the bench. Okay, so here we have it. The little knurled nut is done. So the parts, uh, as I've got them, there's uh, two studs that I've created that uh, will fasten the pivot block onto the engine frame. Um, the cylinder will slide through there like that. And then um, we have, I have nuts to make, two nuts to make, but for now, I'll uh, use, oops, yeah, I got too many loose pieces here, hang on. Because I'm clutch, you know. All right. Hopefully that's in frame. Well, this little stuff's hard for me to hold on to. Okay, there's that one. This one. And, of course, the cylinder goes through there. And the spring. And then our little knurled nut that we just made. And I may have to run the tap through here to clean this up, but maybe not. Nah, it's going to be fine. All right, so there we have it. So, I tell you what, getting pretty close on the mechanical portions of this. I will do a little polishing on these faces. I'll make uh, some smaller nuts. Like I said, a quarter inch or basically six millimeters across flats. Um, so it'll be a little smaller net and about an eighth inch thick. Uh, so that's, uh, boy, I tell you what's coming along pretty good. That's really smooth. That feels nice and smooth. So let's see what's next. All right, the uh, next drawing. Okay, it looks to be uh, the piston, uh, the connecting rod, and the uh, big end. So. Uh, looks like maybe a nut. So it's almost done. So uh, I think once we get this bit here made, uh, that'll be the next video. I think we can uh, mark it uh, for steam ports uh, on the sliding block or on the pivot block, because then we'll have the uh, we'll have the piston to to make sure that the uh, cylinders move to the right place. And I think we can do an air test. So. All right, well, look, I want to stop there. Uh, I don't want to bore you too much with it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, in the next Kenneth Wells video. And, uh, hey, look, if this uh, stuff interests you or you, you find it helpful or entertaining or something like that, 
please consider uh, liking and uh, and sharing it with people and, and subscribe. And if you subscribe and hit the bell, you'll be notified of the next video I release. So other than that, have a blessed day.